to the ground You're dragging me It's constantly No, I I won't make a sound I love the pain It sets me free It's wrong, I can't think right I love the bird below you said What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. With the subject of today's video being the 2000 Pontiac Trans Am WS6 behind me that you've seen in many other videos on the channel. If you're a returning subscriber, if you're new, this is my 2000 Pontiac Trans Am WS6. It's got an LS1 engine in it with the Brian Tooley racing cam and some bolt-ons and a bunch of UMI suspension stuff. So kind of a fun little car to cruise around in. So the subject of today's video is the Strano Master Cylinder Brace. And what it's going to do is aid in the pedal feel, similar to what would happen if you put uh, braided, braided steel brake lines in. Should firm it up a little bit. Now, on these cars, and I'd imagine others after actually looking at this one a little bit, when you, when you put moderate pressure on the brake pedal, the Master Cylinder and Brake Booster actually pump a little bit. And what this is going to do is solidify it so it doesn't move at all. Um, people have been known to have their firewalls tear in these cars from that repeated braking and flexing and relaxing and flexing and relaxing. And I'm going to prevent that and hopefully get a good brake pedal feel. That's kind of the point of today's video. Uh, returning, returning subscribers know that I'm on the hunt for a replacement Corvette. Last summer I had a 2005 C6 Corvette. It had a Z51 option on it, so it was a little bit more of a track type coupe. Better brakes, close ratio transmission. Um, did a bunch of bolt-ons to that car and it was a lot of fun. But I'd like to buy a C6 Z06 or a C7 Z06 or a C6 ZR1 and I've actually found the car and I'm gonna go buy it tomorrow. So today is Thursday when I'm filming this, tomorrow being Friday. I'm gonna go down to the Minneapolis St. Paul area and I'm gonna buy it. Already got it all figured out, got cash ready to go and we're gonna buy something pretty serious. So you have to stay tuned and subscribe and see what the next video is gonna be about. It's uh, gonna be covering the car that I buy. So anyways, we'll get started on this and We'll do an overview of the parts that I ordered as they showed up, and then we'll do an installation, and we'll go do a little quick driving impression. It's not going to be really fun to watch driving, but versus how it felt just betting in the brake pads. Apparently the, the difference is pretty substantial on some cars. This one didn't move too terribly much, the master cylinder, and you'll see that later in the video. So we'll get started on the installation. When we're all done, we'll pick up right here where we're leaving off. So upon initial inspection, looking at this stuff, it seems to be really good quality. The black finish is about perfect. Uh, it was packaged really, really well. I'd put it on par with the UMI performance equipment that I've been installing. It's going to be hard to tell, but the finish is about identical. So whatever black powder coat type finish they're doing, it's very, very similar. That's going to match that perfectly, which is great. Uh, they do also offer this in red, if you're into that sort of thing. We'll do a couple quick shots of these parts, kind of going around them, giving you a once over. But like I said, it's nice stuff. And for a hundred bucks, I think that this little kit here is going to really improve what I've got going on there. We'll do a quick once over of the equipment, then we'll get right to the installation. Like I said, it's going to be a pretty straightforward installation. We're only, only going to need a few small hand tools. We'll need 15 millimeter wrench or socket. I'll be using a socket, a uh, six pointed socket that is. T50 Torx bit, which I have. 14 millimeter wrench and a 16 millimeter wrench or a small adjustable may work for the instructions. So, first thing we're going to end up doing is moving the two 15 millimeter nuts from the front to studs that hold the shock tower on, which would be this bolt or this nut and this nut, and we'll also be removing the Torx bit back here. You want to leave this last mounting point secured so your, your strut doesn't twist and mess with your alignment or anything and it actually outlines in the directions, but first things first, we'll get these two nuts off and the Torx bit out, and we'll be pretty much ready to mount the main structure here 
to the car. Uh, it outlines pretty clearly in the instruction that the nut that's threaded on this side will point towards the front of the car. So ultimately it's going to end up fitting something sort of like that. And this will fit with UMI strut tower braces. I believe it'll fit with the BMR also. Uh, it's, it's outlined on Strano's website. It won't fit with 3.1s as there would be a tube triangulating everything. So if you can picture that, it will clearly be in the way. So we'll get to uh, getting those couple of chunks of hard, we'll get those couple pieces of hardware off and it should only take a couple minutes. Three bolts came out. Two nuts were real easy. Had to push down on the strut tower brace. There's a little bit of pressure on it because it's still mounted on the passenger side. Torx bit came out good. Real happy with that. Uh, bolts are a little bit corroded, but it is a 19 year old car now, so as to be expected, it hasn't been garaged its whole life. So, next big thing in the instructions we are going to assemble the brace. The two legs and the welded nut, as I had pointed out will point towards the front of the car. Install the jam nut onto the adjustable foot, then install the washer. Washer goes between the jam nut and the brace itself. So, fairly straightforward. We'll put this together with the provided washer and we'll keep plugging away. So I've got the master brace assembly pretty much put together outside of the car. I threaded it in way, way in because you wouldn't be able to put this together after mounting the bracket on the car. So it's important that you sort of stage it before actually assembling it. Now, if you don't have a strut tower brace, this is where this little spacer plate is going to come in handy because it's about the same thickness. It'd be uh, 3 eighths, something like that, 3 eighths plate. Not going to measure it. Uh, it comes with each kit, and if you do not have a strut tower brace, you will use this spacer plate because the front legs are actually designed to fit with a strut tower brace. So, being I have one, I will not be using this plate. It's outlined right here in the destruct. It's outlined right here in the instructions. So. Take my word on it, it's in there. I'll throw this in the car. I'll start with putting that T50 Torx bit back on and that'll be real close to wrapping it up. Got a couple nuts to put together, but other than that, we're gonna set tension and a little bit of preload on it with the adjustment with the adjustment nut here and the jam nut to actually hold it tight when we're done. And that'll be it. It's a real easy installation. You could really uh, do this in a parking lot or the side of the road if you wanted to. It's a slick piece. I'm starting to like it already. So. Hopefully it's actually going to turn out pretty good and it's going to be a nice little upgrade here that's going to take. If I wasn't filming and having a beer and uh, you know, kind of just putzing with it, you could do this in like 20 minutes. It's it's a really quick install so don't be don't hesitate about it. It's a pretty, pretty straightforward process. So we'll get back to the car, throw it in and we're going to about wrap it up and have to go for a drive. Just a little piece of advice here. When you are tightening down the front nuts, the nuts on the strut tower brace there are the forward uh, fastening hardware. You'll tighten those to 32 pound-feet, and the Torx bits in the back are going to be tightened to 37 pound-feet. You can find that on LS1 Tech or any other forum, so that information is pretty widely known. So I'll get these torqued down to the right specification. I'll set that preload like I was talking about, and we'll be off and ready for a little drive here and see what it feels like. You don't want to put too much because you don't want to crush the thing into the power brake booster and then bend your firewall. It's more just so it's secure. Don't overdo it, use common sense. And it, it does say it right on the website, it's just use common sense. So I'd make it nice and snug. You gotta think, if it's snug and you give it another quarter turn or so of contact, that brake booster is not gonna move anywhere. So I think the advice is sound and I'm gonna follow it just like it's instructed. So we'll torque these down real quick and then we'll be pretty much ready to go drive. There's not much to this install. It's very straightforward. And if I, don't, if I do say so myself, that's going to be a nice little addition there and it matches the strut tower brace perfect. One thing that kind of bums me out, I did have washers here. I'm not going to be able to use them I don't think. So I'll have to take these out and it's going to scuff up the finish on this on uh, on this this new part which sucks but is what it is. Don't really need the washer. They're not there from the factory so 
So as you can see, everything's all installed. It's loose. The uh, the jam nut, as it would be, is loose there. I have to take my word for it. But I'll hop in the car real quick. We'll get the camera set up, and I'll show you how much that master cylinder actually moves before we put the tension on it. So you get a good idea of what this is actually going to correct. So we'll do a little before and after, and you'll get a better sense of why I'm doing this. So I'll apply moderate brake pressure. Not crushing the thing, but you, uh, you get the idea. This would be considered regular braking, starting, stopping, that kind of thing. So I'll pump it four times. Pretty much the gist of the installation if you do not have a 14 and 16 millimeter wrench that fit at your disposal uh, the standard equivalent the standard equivalent would be a 9 16 and a 5 8 because the nut and the jam nut are different sizes so you do need two different nuts um, I put between a quarter and a half inch I would estimate it's kind of bro science I didn't use like a dial indicator or anything really super technical but I went about a quarter turn, then gave it a little bit more, so it should be roughly in the middle. I really didn't overgive it. I guess I couldn't tell if the master cylinder was moving very much when I did that, but uh, I don't think I overdid it at any rate. So I made sure the jam nut's good and tight. So I'd say that that installation is done. Uh, one thing that was kind of surprising is that the torque specification for the strut tower bolts was actually a lot less than I thought it was. So if I was putting them on by hand, I'm probably twice as tight as they should actually be. So keep that in mind. You're probably putting a lot more muscle into them than they actually have to be. If I went and put the torque wrench on the passenger side, I would bet they're more like 60, 80 pound feet if I had to guess, something like that anyways. Um, 37 and 32 pound feet, it's really not much. So make sure you put your stuff to spec. Um, smarter people than, than myself actually thought of that stuff. So anyways, I guess it's nighttime now, and it should be nice in the next couple days, so I'll be seeing you guys in a couple days, and we'll go for a drive in this, and see what it feels like. I'm going to put a little bit of heat in the engine here. Get the windows cracked for a proper cold start sound. Usually I start it from the outside, but we'll start from inside this time. This car is really dirty. Next thing I gotta do is actually clean it. I haven't taken all the dust off of it or anything since winter, so it's pretty gross. Well, so far driving the car, the brake pedal does feel like there's a definite braking point now. Uh, the difference isn't extremely dramatic, like some people have said on the LS1 tech forums, which I frequent on. So doing a little bit of research, the results rendered a little bit less satisfying result than I thought there might have been after reading quite a few reviews on it. The uh, upside though is that the brake pedal does feel more positive, I guess you could say. Uh, when you lead into the brake pedal, to me it feels more like you, you hit a braking point and it's definite. It doesn't feel as slushy. It feels more direct, I guess. So taking out that little bit of a slop that there was in the master cylinder when you hit the brakes did make a difference. I think if you want to make the car as good as you possibly can, it's well worth it. It's, it's a good step or a good preventative measure anyways. If you're worried about the firewall flexing and tearing, it's a good preventative measure to take. Now, as you saw in the video, I ended up putting between a half and three quarters of a turn of preload. Uh, I don't think you'd stand to gain anything by putting in more, so the instructions are actually pretty good. Uh, I, I just can't see preloading it any tighter gaining anything. 
the master cylinder doesn't seem to move at all. Um, I'll show you another clip of it before and after. I'll just insert it right here. told for a hundred bucks I mean you can feel the difference I'll, I'll say that much it doesn't come across at all in video but when you do hit the brakes it does feel more positive and that's that's what others have said and it is true so we'll go put a few miles on the car we would actually recently got like six or eight inches of snow so it's gonna be good to put a couple miles on it and uh, it might actually rain on me but we're gonna try and put it through its paces a little bit and uh, we'll get back to the garage and we'll talk a little bit about the car I'm gonna buy I guess at this point I don't know how much I'm going to say about it because I do want to make another video about it and that will be coming out this weekend I believe. So you have to stay tuned for that but for now I'm going to go put a couple more miles on the car and we'll see you in a little bit. So as you can see, I ended up making it home in one piece. Well, I did, my GoPro did <laughs> take a tumble. Uh, the car is super dusty, so I shouldn't be surprised that that happened, but I ended up just breaking the suction cup mount for it, so not a total loss. The GoPro still functional, and the lens and the camera, reticle and everything are in good shape. So I just actually watched the video. Uh, I just watched the video that I just recorded. So my impression is that that master cylinder doesn't move at all. Now, keep in mind I'm watching it on a small video camera screen, but I bet you when I blow it up, you won't even be able to tell that the thing moves at all. Uh, for $100, that strain all master cylinder brace does a really good job. So I'd give it a thumbs up. I've never had one on an F body before, but I did notice that the brake pedal feels more confident, I guess I would say. And there's actually some sensation in the pedal. You could feel a little bit of vibration. You, it wasn't as numb as it used to be. So there's more of a direct line to the new pads and rotors, which is a good thing. So for hundred bucks, it feels like you did something pretty significant on the car. And to be honest, the pedal feels better with that modification than it did with the new pads and rotors. Car stops a lot better with that stuff, but as far as the feeling and driving experience goes, it was much more noticeable with that, uh, with the master cylinder brace, because for the most part, you're not really hard braking, just cruising around. So I gave it a 10 out of 10, it's worth a hundred bucks. Check out Strano's website, put a link down in the description. That brings me to my final point of discussion in today's video. Like I said uh, in the start of the video, I'm gonna buy a new Corvette tomorrow. So you can drop a comment down below and guess what it is. It's gonna be the more practical of the three options that I've kind of cited. This one in particular makes some really big power, which is really cool. It's a color I don't particularly care for, but the price is right. So sometimes you gotta make a little bit of a sacrifice and try and spend your money a little bit more wisely. So if you're new to the channel, hope you liked today's video. Definitely subscribe and check out this new Corvette I'm gonna buy. It's really gonna be rowdy. Uh, it didn't really hit me till a day or two ago, but I'm gonna have like GM garage goals for, for myself. I've wanted, I mean, even a couple years ago, I guess I could say I never would have thought I would have had either of these cars. So it's really kind of blown me away. I don't think it's really hit me yet, but this is kind of like a big deal for me. Yeah, like I said, if you're new to the channel, I do hope you liked today's video. You wanna check out the new Corvette that's gonna be that I'll have hopefully a video up of this weekend. Uh, make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. But until then, for everyone else that's been subscribed, we're about 2,700 strong right now. So that's awesome. I can't believe there's that many people that are halfway interested in these cars and uh, me being a halfway decent narrator, I hope. We'll see you this weekend in the new Corvette.